lot of other stuff for um, before. So I went back to school to be like a financial analyst or like a banker. But like the, um, so before I went to school, those jobs were big. So like Goldman Sachs, that type of stuff. But like to, I found out that you know you have to really know someone or you know be connected to really get into that world. And you know, coming out of business school, you know, I was I wasn't able to get anything. So it was like the first time in my life I've been like without a job. So I mean, like, so yeah, I'm looking around for, you know, I guess, you know, uh, I guess uh, a community of people who are, in, you know, trying to move forward. You know, that's how I, you know, came into this. You know, so right now, um, what I'm doing is kind of going through. The licensing process to uh, become a financial advisor while you know still doing everything I can to make you know ends meet. Um, so, yeah, you know, like this past Saturday, I finished uh, my this life insurance class. Like, like before that, I didn't, I never knew nothing about life insurance, so knocked all that out in the, in the weekend. So I, I guess I take the test whenever I schedule it. Hopefully, I'll be able to take it this Saturday my life insurance license, and then after that, um, get my license so that I can be able to start selling or start advising on um, investments. Yeah. So, that's kind of you working on right your now. website and getting your business cards and branding, working on your brand, because <laughs> while you're building your business, you could be working on your brand. Right, right. Mm -hmm. I mean, I haven't bought business cards in so long. And I went when I went back to the site that I went, like, it just, I mean, like, I remember, like, it was, like, uh, my old business cards, like, all of my old businesses. And it was, like, I just felt so depressed. I couldn't even, like... You got a best of bread. That's what I, that's what I went. And I got okay. so many business cards. Delete like, them images and you know, it's like, <laughs> start oh, over. Man. You know, the first thing, it was, so the name of the um, real estate company was called... Um, Power Enterprises, and I, don't know, I mean, just the memories of, you know, back when I thought I was going to own the world, you know, it was like I saw that, and it was like, oh, man, you know, but you're right, I do need to get some business cards. And don't let your bad just because those right. things didn't work out. Yeah, yeah, I, I know that mentally, you know, but it's like when you, when you're going through it, it's a lot, I mean, it's like, all, all right, markets, you know. he'll help you at that moment. He keep amazing. He seems like he don't know it yet. I think he's, I think he's great. Alright, so it's just, yeah. Every time we have these, it's like, it's typically, it's another, I talked to Art, he couldn't make it today. It's another guy. He was in the very first time I did it. Um, and he's, he's, a, he's a coach. Um, then Pierre came to the second one. He's been to every one of us since. And it's like, it's typically like, People kind of on like that, that spiritual side. And then we got like this businessman, financial guy. And it's like, um, I think it's tremendous how he like balance both worlds, uh, but I don't think he see like his light yet. I feel like I see it. I think people that come around him see it. But I don't think he see his light yet. But he comes, so that's that's that's. That a lot. Yeah. yeah. I um, this morning I met with the um, financial advisor. He's somebody that I met like at a. Um, networking event like last October I really don't have a use for a financial advisor right now at this point in time but he's so diligent in this follow up I say okay I'll sit down and talk to you um, he knows what I've done because he's on my newsletter list um, he wanted to do like some cross like okay I could come do my spiel where he does his thing and he can come do his spiel while I do my thing um, and, I, and it, it kind of relates to a discussion that me and you had like, a few months back about like language, being that all of us having like a central language that like regardless of where we come from, whatever demographic we're talking about, that like we all speak it. And uh, a point that I made to him like, okay, when he called me a week ago, he was like, I have to slow him down. He was like, Obama just did something, so it's this great opportunity in X, Y, Z. You need to get in now and get in big. And that's what made me even call my attention, like, Bro, where I come from, that wouldn't work. You know, I don't, I don't play the stock market, so what do you mean? Like, I need to get in, get in. I don't even got money to do that if I wanted to. So me and him ended up having a nice conversation this morning about, like, all right, if we were to do something like that, you can't come talk to people where I come from in that language. They wouldn't understand it. 
Like the way me and you are talking right now, that might work, but you can't talk to us like we, you got this hot stop or something like we need to jump on. And I wanted to bring that up tonight, like um, kind of broaching that conversation we had before about like that, that central language that like people speak. Um, being in, I think again, I think you're interested in like how typically you come in this room and it's a lot of people like me and Nina, but like we get your language. We all kind of get that language. And then like I try to understand like your language coming from like a financial sector and so on and so forth. Um, but I do think it's like a centralized language that we all understand um, at its base. Like I think people typically, there's two emotions, two things going on in people at all times. There's gaining pleasure and avoiding pain. At all times, that's happening. It's happening right now with me and you. It's happening right now with me and you. We either avoiding pleasure, I mean avoiding pain, or like looking for pleasure. Typically, avoiding pain wins because we'll do a lot more to survive than we will to thrive, typically. Um, I'll put more effort into making sure my life stay on than I might into going back to school to get another degree, even though they might be equally beneficial. Um, but uh, for us as world changers, which I believe we are, I think finding that central language and like those types of terms will allow us to not only reach more people, but like be able to communicate whatever it is on our brain like a little bit better. Like it's things that I want to get out. Like me and you talking, it's like, okay, Marcus, you probably identify your niche. It'll probably be more beneficial to go that way with it. I'm like, no, no, I mean, it's a language. I think I can speak and I can talk to anybody. And he's like, no, slow it down. And I think it's a nugget in what you're saying um, to a point that Identifying that niche is key because that can be like the springboard. But even in identifying that niche, there's language that they speak. And even like when you see like uh, people out in nature, they got like the born and like you can call it like the bird calling, and like all the birds can respond to that. Identify that niche and then you go from there. But I, it's just it's something in language. It's something in language and like how we communicate and how we can be able to communicate to more people. Um, and I just wanted to like broach that conversation, bounce it off people. Um, what do you think besides like the basic functions of life, hunger like it's not hard to go somewhere and say let somebody know you're hungry um, it's not hard to go somebody, somewhere and let somebody know say hey, I'm freezing, I'm cold but when you go somewhere and say um, alright I don't have the tools I need to, to to live the life I want to lead. That's a basic language that we all talk, but we don't, we not, it's not as easy to communicate that like it is to say, I'm starving, could you help me eat? Um, but it's the similar, it's a similar type of dialogue. Um, so I'm, I'm curious to like what you guys think about like that type of conversation or like, do you even think it's possible? Am I on left field? Or um, is it just something that you could possibly work at? Is it something that you could just leave alone and let it work itself out? Like maybe like economic. They always say with a lot of economic terms, like should you mess with a country or mess with a uh, financial the financial sector when somebody's in recession, or should you let the market correct itself? And you got those people that say you should or you shouldn't. Um, I feel the same way about things like this. But I wonder, like, should you mess with language and just try to go about your business, or should I spend time like trying to figure out what's the language that I can use that probably everybody might respond to, since we all respond to the same things, survival at the most part. Yeah, but no, not everybody's going to speak the same language, same language, because you have to understand the fact that we could even take it from a cultural standpoint. you got people that speak different languages in a normal sense. So when you come into mentally, you have different cultures. You have, you know, I can be mentally here, somebody else could be mentally there. We're not going to understand the same thing. You probably can talk to us in a more intellectual way or something like that, but for another group, you got to dumb it down. So you have to know your audience. You got to know who you're speaking to. You got to know the crowd you're around. If we was in a room full of um, Caucasian people, I would still talk like Nina talk, but I may, you know, I, I will show that I'm more so. I wouldn't say educated, but I can get on your level, you know, in the sense that I know how to be. But if I'm in a room full of teenagers, regardless of what race there is, anything, I'm going to say more things that can relate to them, in a sense, if that makes sense. So no matter where you go, you have to adapt your language to the community you're around, and it'll probably never be exactly the same based off of the crowd you're around. 
you can have a central stand, but if you go into any environment and you have this one mindset, this is my language, that's all, that's it, don't expect to reach every crowd because every crowd is not going to have, you know, the same mentality. Like, I know some people that just deep, and they deep all the time. Just all the time. You going in a room full of people that is unmotivated, that, you know, eighth grade education, if that, and you just deep using them words that only the dictionary mostly see, you know. Mm-hmm. They not listening to you. They not going to get anything out of what you said besides he using big words or she using big words, and it's going to go over their head. You're going to lose them. So to grasp the attention, you have to know the environment that you're going into. And so if you're trying to talk to somebody to tell them, you know, what your needs are or something like that, again, you, you got to know the person you're talking to. Like, for example, when you're dealing with the people at your church, you try one way and then you had to go a different way, even though it was a different person you reached out to. But because your language kind of had to change and your, your attitude and your demeanor had to change for you to feel like you're even getting something done. But staying the calm, nice person you were, it'll probably be two, three months later, and you'll still be making the same phone call, waiting on the same person. So you have to adapt to your environment and your community. Like for me, it'll be easy for me to go in my church and be like, hey, I'm using the church on this day at this time. Is that cool? You know, because I'm pastor's assistant, you know, and I help with all that stuff. But if I was going into somebody else's church or environment or a bigger location, it would be something different. I wouldn't be able to just go and say, hey, I want to use the church on this day. Is that cool? If that makes sense to you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Not sure if I answered your question. But. You did. Um, but kind of like the question was like, that's valid. Mm-hmm. To a point of like, depending on what, like we feed people. Even you. We feed people. I think like people on, on the level of awareness that we are on, we feed people. Um, and it's always going to be that give and take. Or like when we walk into an environment, are we imposing our will or are they imposing their will? Now, there's places you'll go where you're going to watch your language. You're going to say, like, I don't even know if this is going to come off right here. Um, but that, I think that becomes a question where, like, those people are imposing their will. But you got to get in a situation where, like, are you, you talking about, like, how much time do you put into, like, trying to change somebody's mind and not ready to get there anyway? You can't go into anything trying to change nobody's mind. But to, but to a point, I think mm, if somebody, we all understand, like, all right, if we don't get food, we'll die, period. That's not like a, okay, a deep person thing. That's not a light person thing, shallow person thing, mean person thing, happy person thing, angry person thing. Just a, a, a normal thing. If we don't have uh, a roof over our head at night, that makes us homeless. That ain't a deep person thing. Uh, that's not a that person type of thing. Um... And potentially this is like the holy grail I may be chasing after. But I think like sometimes the amount of time that we put into like um, altering the message, that's that's what's adding the layers of as far as getting away from a real base idea, the real fact. But us we, we can I think we can overcomplicate in the sense of like making sure we're identifying who we're getting to. Whether like you walk in someone and say, all right. This is going to happen if you do this. I don't care who you are. There's nothing you can do about it. To me, I look at it like hunger. Like, if you do not eat food, you're going to die. I don't need to dress that up. I don't need to dumb it down. I don't need to do nothing to it. That's just a, a, a prime thing. What's, is it possible to find a, to be able to talk that language when it comes to, like, what it is we do? Because I think what we're talking about is just as valuable. Um, if you mentally, to a place, if you do, are not in a certain place, you, are, you will die. Period. Um, and sometimes maybe we do ourselves a disservice by always dressing it up, coming with scientific stuff, like you say, to back it up, and then we turn it into this deep thing. We're like, eh, maybe it's not that deep. I don't think it's all that deep. Like, okay, if you're not here, you're probably going to end up there. Like, I don't know. Maybe that's what a lot of people say. You're passionate. My passion comes because I feel like this, the stuff we're talking about is simple, and we're making it like, man, you have to be deep. I don't know if I can ever do that. No, I don't think it's that simple. I don't think it's that deep. I think, like, hey, I want to get where I want to get. Where I want to get is over here. I'm right here. What's in between here? Let's get that gap shorter. And usually that don't include um, that don't include lack of vision about where you want to go. Just 
typically what most people lack, where they want to go, um, what it realistically would take to get there, which is typically just work. Um, but these are like real, real simple concepts that like we get put in a motivational speaker box. We're like, look at what we're telling people. Right. You know? Um, we're not That's telling why I don't like calling myself a I hate it. I hate it. I say inspirational I trainer, created my own title. Like you know, somebody like Iris from somebody like yourself is probably not even in the field. Like, how do this type of conversation bounce off you? What I heard from when you first spoke, thought of, I mean, it brought up something that I've been thinking about anyway. Like with the language, I think it depends on like what are you trying to do. You know, so like what you're saying is what I think you're asking is: is there a universal language that you can speak with everyone? I don't think that. I mean. It is because I mean, like, for people are in different places emotionally, people in different places mentally. So, in order for someone to hear what you have to say, excuse me, they have to be sorry, in a um, like kind of in a space to to hear you. You know, like not a lot of people are going to. I think I guess. There's a lot of motivational speakers and life coaches now, so now it's catching on. But like five or ten years ago, man, someone said, "Yeah, I'm a life coach." I'm like, "Oh, that's that's great. You know, that's some new age you know, stuff." <laughs> like, <get outta> here. <laughs> but like now, you know, people are really you know respect now that you know all of the big time people, you know, like pretty much every celebrity has a life coach or trainer, and you know a lot of people. Are really um, like digging that? You're, they, I guess, notice the benefit that a life coach offers them. So, like, if you go down to the south, you know, those are probably the the simplest people in the world. They're probably because of, like, she was saying, the culture of what they believe. They probably believe this life coach stuff is for the birds because you know they kind of think life is simple. You know, I mean, so they're not really in the space because of everything that they've, all of the experiences they've had, unless they've had an experience that can kind of identify this person can help me do this, unless, you know, there's that special type of person who's had those special experiences, they're probably not going to be in the space because of their experiences. Another person, like if, if somebody is like on top of the world or they think they know everything, and you say you're a life coach and you tell you talk about what you do, they're probably gonna say to themselves, the only people that you deal with are losers. You know what I mean? So yeah. um I for somebody like yourself just like, okay, you in the financial sector, so to speak. Um now certain images pop into my head just thinking about things that you do. Um But, like, taking what you do for an example, I still believe that, like, there's just, like, a general language. Okay, you want to, when you retire, you want X amount of dollars. That's not, a, like, a financial sector thing. That's just a regular life thing. Um, if you live the life you want to need, you probably need more money. That's not a financial sector thing. That's a regular life thing. Well, I think, like, um, even if we were to dilute, um, dilute what, what it is you do down into base, Human desire. They're like a, it's just a general language that it gets dressed up over a certain period of time. I was taking like the for I was taking like the basic graduate level accounting classes, <clears throat> and me and my me and my um, instructor we didn't get into a, like a debate, but I was just like the more we went, it just felt like somebody was sitting there one day, and instead of doing things the right way, they said, "All right, I'm just going to change the structure." Okay, we usually do 2 plus 2 equals 4, 2 plus 2 equals 4, but this is not working out. So I need to do a 2 plus 2 equals 4, remainder 3. Because, like, the way I really want to do things right now, well, the number's not adding up, so I'm going to create a different way. Like, we were, like, going through, like, uh, all the different types of uh, balance sheets, income statements, things like that. And they all just derivatives of the exact same thing, but, like, they were finding more complex ways to, to like validate like the same number like you might you might understand like a little bit better than I would but that's what it felt like somebody to kind of like look at things nuts and bolts 
And it's like, all right, we got one sheet that's telling me this thing. We got this sheet that's telling me another thing. And then now we're going to start talking about appreciative assets and these types of things. But they all just souped up versions to just say what we wanted to say as opposed to, like, what's actually happening. Um, but if we say we just dumb that down, okay, your business is... Your business is successful if you make more money than you spend. Okay. <laughs> when you start talking to people like that and you don't start talking to people in financial terms and things like that, it's just a general knowledge that like anybody can understand that. Yeah. If you make more money than you spend or you watch sports, if you score more points than the other team, then you won. Now we can go through the rule book on like, okay, a two-point basket is this, and a foul is this, and if you, tr you, you carry the ball, is this, and we blow the whistle when it's like this, and at this point in time, you substitute. But at the end of the day, if you score more points than the other team, you win. Um, and kind of what we went with it was like, okay, does that responsibility fall on us? Would that responsibility fall on them? And that's before we even get past the idea, like, is what we're talking about possible? But I think, like, I agree in a sense where, like, you do got to find – Finding out what the common language is might be just as important to find out if it's possible. Um, because I wouldn't know, like, the language to say, that, like, okay, in life, like how I can say about sports, if you score more than the other team, you won. I have no idea, like, what that might be like for life. I guess it was like, okay, once you stop breathing, you're dead. You know, I guess that's a common language that we all speak. Um, but I do think it's possible. I think it's that type of thing is like yeah. possible. I think in the terms of like your like the life coaching thing is like can you make the other person identify in their head the value that you would your you and your service would bring to them. You know what I mean? So um, like going back to the southern dude example you think think about something like redneck from alabama or something you know he's on the farm you know with his chickens you know and you say um you know you might need a you know if you allow me to work with you i can i don't know make you um i don't know have your farm be more successful or something and then, you know, he'll probably say something like, well, if I get up at 6 o'clock in the morning and, you know, do all the chickens, then I'm going to be just fine. So, and then, you know, so, I mean, but then you would, I don't know, probably say something like, well, what if you make a more efficient way to do this and then you can do it for six hours instead of 18 hours? You know, then, you know, that the, the farmer or whatever will come up and see the benefit if you can if you can kind of make him realize that. Do you understand what I'm saying? I get exactly what you're saying. You know so, you're man, so it's like, um, so it's like, like I, I hear you saying, like, language, but, like, I think it's, it's more like, can you make that other person realize the value and the validity of kind of what you bring into the table? I think you hit it on the head, though. I think, um... If we use this sudden example, like take me 18 hours a day, but here's a way to do it six. Um, that person gonna think you're crazy. When TV first came out, they was like, "This is a moving picture." Like, what they what they say? Like, it's people inside a box or something like that. I can only imagine what Alexander Graham Bell went through. I want to talk to people that's not even here, like people, um, whether it's good for them or not. People like ridicule change. I was talking to a, um, a friend of mine earlier today. He an artist, and he feel like. To get where he need to go, he need to kind of establish himself downtown because downtown people got the money to pay for the payments for what he feel like they were. I'm like, and he kind of caught the, the, the front end of my conversation with the church. I'm like, um, I think you would be better served um, going back out there and kind of creating your own lane, creating that buzz. Because I don't think necessarily people downtown are like trendsetters. I think they just pick up on what they feel like is hot and they got the money to kind of like embellish or like indulge in whatever they think is hot but you can go out there and kind of create it and then like you have passion like and I told him like you are the only artist that I know I don't know the art world and you could go out there and you can be the only artist that a lot of people know like so you got an entire city places where like you're the only artist they physically know they can touch where like you come down here and like you're just one of a lot so I would think I would say okay you cultivate that as opposed to going, to me, just kind of like go to your thing, instead of coming down here and saying, like, um, I just want to be one of the many 
And like it, it, it doesn't make sense to me. Or even the conversation we're having right now. Steve Jobs said that like you take you make something that people need, and you sometimes do that before they know they need it. Like we didn't know we needed an iPod until he made an iPod. Like we didn't know that like okay. If I'm a, I want to carry my music around, and I don't want to carry a big bulky CD player around, why don't I just make this little thing where I can just throw all my files? Who knew that we needed that before we made it? Um, I think the conversation that we have right now is kind of along those lines. Um, there's things that we say or we have to say, people don't know they need them yet. Um, I think the illustrations of how we live our own lives that that illustrate what it is we're talking about, and then the language. So either people gonna look at me and they're gonna say like. All right, the way he kind of do things, or the way he go about things, I can do it in such a way where it feel like, okay, if I want to get where I want to go, I can kind of do that too. That take too long. It'd be a lot easier if you could come up to me and say, okay, Marcus, what's to it? And then like I had a language, regardless of who you are, to say like, okay, this is how I can apply to you. Like with your client, I question you. When you first sit down with somebody that you're about to coach, when you first sit down with somebody you're about to go speak to. Um, And when you decipher like where they are and like how you kind of can like fit your services in or fit like um, the way you do things in, how how do you kind of maneuver that? Because everybody, you do one, you you offer a service, mm -hmm. but you probably deal with all different types of people. Mm -hmm. So how do you maneuver that, bringing that, making that apply to all these different people, but you offer one service? Just a uh, simple rule, you. Find out what the problem is and create the solution. You listen. So you ask a question, tell me who you are, tell me why you um, contacted me, what is it that you would like to even see happen in your life, or what do you want to coach, why are you seeking coaches, and listen to what their problems are. And see, and if honestly, if I feel like mm, I'm not the coach for that person, I'll refer out. But if they say something that's within my area that I have a passion for, because I don't believe in coaching somebody and forcing myself to um, be their expert when, like for me, helping a person, uh, I guess, for the being that. Bring you, I think. I'm sorry, go ahead. Being a person, but you see, it's on silent. It's not even vibrating the whole table right now, you know. It's, a, it's so easy to put it on silent. It's no problem. Um, <laughs> we're having the <laughs> Android, Apple, or <sighs> however, back to the question at hand, um, to, um, yeah, just, I, I don't want to, It's I say I don't want to help people find their purpose, although I always throw it out there at them, but. Just get you focused on wanting to do something with yourself. Now, would you say the same thing? Like, if you were to sit down, like, say, if I came to you and said, like, um, yeah, um, I think I really need to start thinking about like my financial future. I'm pretty sure you offer one service, but you have to figure out you have to figure out like my language, figure out how to talk to me based on your expertise and stuff that I don't know nothing about. So you would find a language to like talk to me, which it might be different for like other people, but I'm pretty sure like you would you would make it so a third grader could understand. Yeah, yeah. Like so one thing one difference I know that I'm gonna have between other me and other financial advisors is like first of all, I, I think I know a lot more about finance than most most financial advisors, they don't know anything about finance. They're more salesmen. So um, they they ask questions like do you so like? Do you need the money? Do you, are you gonna need your money now or in the future? Or, you know stuff like that. And the average person is gonna be like, "What? I don't know." <laughs> so, so I'm more like I think what I'm gonna be. Well, I'm really good. The reason I told that whole thing is to say that I like I'm good with graphs and and charts. So I would like take a sheet of paper and a pencil and just say, "Okay, if you if you." Like, so what do you want to do? So you want, you thinking about your financial future, like, do you want to make sure that you can retire? Do you want to be able to save for your kids' college? Or do you want to just maybe make it possible so that when you're 50 years old, you can work 30 hours a week instead of 50 hours a week? You know, 
I mean, it's different. I mean, it's different people want different things. So if you want, but you might say something like, well, what I really want is um, I want to be able to, you might say something in your language to say something like, I want a check every month, whether I work or not. So I'm like, okay, I can set that up for you by doing this, by, you know, investing in something that pays you, whether you're retired, it's something that you can, you can actually get money out of, you know, and, you know, just different things. So, you know, like she said, just listening to what people want and then recommending different possibilities that I know about, you know, so. What would y'all call that, um, how that gets carried out, would y'all call that person a language? I think y'all just a a language. I think y'all just kind of describe the same things, but coming from two different sectors. I'm not sure if it's language, but it's just more identifying. It's just identifying what's going on inside that person, you know, and trying to tap into that. So it might be language, like you said. I'm not sure. I have no idea. What do you What do you know already that you can offer as a service right now? In your area, you say you're building your brand and things like that, but you know some stuff. Right. I mean, the thing is, I know I know everything. It's just you need the licenses so that I don't get sued. You know. If you're doing workshops, do you need licenses? You can do financial literacy one on one. Financial literacy for dads, yeah, I could do that. Know? I could do that if I wanted to. Yeah, I could do that. Because yeah. I heard you. I'm a listener. And I heard you say something earlier about, you know, I'm doing this temp thing for now or whatever. But you can kind of start creating your own before you create your own, if that makes sense. Yeah, thanks. In the process. Because even while you're building, while you're working on your licensing and things like that, you can present yourself, like I said earlier, when you was like, well, I'm starting. I was like, no, you're the expert. Because I know nothing about financial literacy. So to me, you're the expert. Like, you probably can change my whole world, <laughs> you know. But, um... That particular type of language will be important, but then just starting, because I think a lot of us, we wait for those licensings and things like that, and one of the things that I learned from Marcus that I I definitely um, appreciate from him when he was coaching me at the time and talking to me, it's just like, why did I need a, why do, wait, wait, what you tell me, why do I need a certification for somebody to tell me I'm an expert at something? I know in financial literacy that's, you know, something, but for someone who knows nothing, the knowledge that you already have without your certifications is very valuable. So you're waiting on your licensing, but what can you offer people while you're waiting on your licensing? What, you know, basic knowledge or just anything, because there's a lot of people who are... Like, the thing is, like, um, like, people like to sue, and, like, so I'm not, so, like, the the SEC or whatever can come in and say, you told this person to do this and you got paid for it. And there are like laws against, you know, Holy people. workshops? I mean, I guess I could have, I don't know. I would have to look that up. But like, I know I, I wouldn't be able to, I'm not legally allowed to tell people how to put, how to allocate their money. Even though I know like better than probably most financial advisors how to do that. But, like, I'm legally not allowed to do that, you know. Well, are you not able to host workshops and just right, I would have basic to look that up. knowledge? I no, I, I wouldn't even. I, I bet know, it's more I simple probably, than you're making it. Like Marcus said, we just is. take things and we just, <laughs> and we do. Navita is still talking about, you know, and that's one of the things that made her more comfortable with us doing the show, the TV show, because they've never produced shows before or anything, and it was like, Okay, we're jumping out here and we're doing this. And for me, it's like, okay, never hosted a TV show before. I've never done that. Like, yeah, I talk to people, but this there's something totally different. Like, but see, I think that's what like all this stuff is tied into. Like, it's um, it's a language. That's what like the idea of language like come in. Like, when we go and do stuff, it's really like simple stuff we're doing. Like, I was talking to a friend of mine the other day. He like said he wanted to start a restaurant. They say, like, starting a restaurant, like, I don't know. I don't know. I'm like, well, instead of keeping it in that type of language, why don't you put it in the language of, okay, tomorrow you go, you just go down to Washington and see what forms you might need. Um, the next day after that, maybe you look at, like, franchise opportunities. The next day after that, you pull your credit report for free to see where you're at. Um, 
The next day after that, you might just go look at some space. Now, by Friday, you knee deep into like starting your own restaurant and you're not looking at it just like, I'm going to start my own restaurant. But to me, like, even like that is a language. Like, uh, to me, the language is called like dumbing it down, putting it in language that I can understand. I don't know the financial sector, but if somebody said, okay, um, like, I, after talking to the guy earlier, I went to talk to another guy, he was like, was the guy talking about mutual funds? You need to mess with mutual funds. You need to in, mess with, like, index stocks or something like that. You know, are you familiar with that, index funds? I know what they are. Yeah, he was like, don't do that. I ain't know what that was either, but, like, uh, but just look at what we, the stuff we got at our disposal, things like Google. Like, it's really as simple as, like, um, you can Google stuff nowadays. Anything. You know? Um, I want you to look at this stuff. This is what the guy gave me. I'm not mean. You gotta look at it right now. I'm just saying, like, kind of like take it with you. It's just no. like <laughs> it's what it's some it's something where like he looked. He's talked to me and said like, all right, I'm gonna make this up for you. And if we ever do something in the future, these are the types of things. This is an example of like what I would talk to people about if you would allow me to come talk to your group. Okay. And one of the questions I asked him was like, okay, if I went and showed this to somebody else, what would they tell me? Would they tell me you would be asking me? Would they tell me this is on a level of like what should be happening? Because like Nina said, I'm an, I'm I'm not an I'm not an expert. So what you kind of tell me, that's all I know about it. Pretty much. So I'm careful about the language that he talks to me in, because I think the language thing is a two way street. Because um, I would be like, what, what I would have to deal with on my side, um, for the, for all intents and purposes, I deal with black people right now. Um, so if I if I like were to bring you somewhere and you this old white guy, first if you're not talking the language that they used to talk in, first and foremost, let alone you're gonna create a wall. They're going to be like, okay, this white man is trying to do this to me. You, it's, it's that stigma there. And I told him, like, okay, I'm going to let somebody look at this because I'm going to want to feel like that you're on the level. I mean, yeah, this is, like, I guess their way of, like, trying to put, like, I mean, like, the, the language of investing is really technical. I guess this is their attempt at, like, dumbing it down or, like, putting it in a language, like you were saying that regular people can understand. But it's still, even you reading it, it's like, you know... Uh, That's what I told him. But he yeah. said some of the stuff you said. I said, like, all right, this is great, but if I were ever to talk to somebody, either A, if you wanted me talking to him for you to make the introduction, or B, you wanted to talk to him, that wouldn't work. So can you make something that's like a normal... She paper is like, no, I can't. He wants you to because read there's certain that compliance way. things that he can't do. I was like, whatever... He like went through this sheet with me, and I was like, I'm pretty intelligent. Sure. Yeah, and I can make sense of what it is you're kind of telling. No, this one, the one, that one, he made a mistake on that one. But say something like this one. He said, like, uh, this is basically starting out with, like, a $100 a month investment and what could, what could happen, and then at the end of X amount of years, uh, 35 years, that's what it should yield. And he used, like, the past as an example of going through the up and downs of, like, the economic cycle. Not to say that, because it's not just going to be even. Like, every year you make this, it's going to be 2008 going to happen. 2000 is going to happen. That's just going to happen. So we say, like, over a general course of time, this is where you would end up. This is how stuff will work. And I'm not an expert, so I'm just like, okay, I get what you're telling me, but I don't know your language. Well, what you're telling me is just something I'm going to buy into hook, line, and sinker. Or if I went and showed it to somebody like Pierre, well, he tell me the same thing you're telling me. Um, but again, it brings up like a yeah, question. I mean, like, this is more just retirement planning. So, I mean, like, yeah. So I mean, if you're t if you're planning for retirement, like I mean, basically what he's saying is it's best to the point that he's gonna try to make with this is like over 35 years, if you put your money into whatever fund he's trying to sell you, then you would have m m the amount of money that he is trying to show you at the end. So like he's gonna probably try to say something like if you invest a hundred dollars a month. Now you'll have this one hundred and eighteen thousand at the end of That's what he said, six seventy five, and then he like say okay versus that versus if you would have started ten years ago, you would have had two point five million. So I guess that's the way to create a sense of urgency that don't yeah. waste time, start right now, looking at your financial future. Right. Now I got that, but I feel like okay, if I were to go talk to somebody, that's not the route I would take because to me that's like a two layered of a language. I think the average person wouldn't respond to that. I would rather, if somebody came up to me, if, if they were talking that to me and they really wanted to make a dent, they would say, the amount of money that you spent on going to the movies and going out to dinner last month, 
And you just put that aside and and I wouldn't even say 30 years. I would bring in a language in 10 years, you can have X amount of dollars. Or if you even want to say, if you did that for 35 years, you can have over half a million dollars. And that's just like cutting out going to the movies. One, one day out of the month, going to the movies and going to get something to eat. I'd be like, damn, really? As opposed to like, this, maybe that's a language only you could understand. But even that, I believe it's a language. Or like Even something like that, that, that could make it make sense to everybody. I don't know if, you, I don't think he found it, but like, because it's like you said, you don't know who you're talking to. Um, he could be talking, he could have been talking to you and not knew it, somebody that got a degree in it, and y'all could have just ran into each other. He could have been showing you that, and you could have just humored him and listened, and then back there, like, bro, I, I know, this, this is what I do too. So you, either, you either could have said, okay, what you're saying is on point, or you could have said, like, you could have saved yourself about 15 minutes, because I know what you're talking about, and it might be BS. Um, but I think even with something like this, this like Spanish to a lot of people, I think it's a general language, a general, general one. Well, like you can say it to me, and even whether I went to school or not, or you can say it to her whether she went to school or not, and they get it. So yeah, it's more like him. So with this, like I said, like most of the people that are like in financial or who are like financial representatives, they're more salespeople. Than, so he probably. But he said the same thing you said. I was like, okay, why should I talk to you instead of talk to somebody else? You're like. Most people you deal with are going to be salespeople. I have 20 years experience. I'm from... I 20 years experience in sales, probably. You know? So, I mean, he's probably, like like you said, like, I mean, I don't know. I don't know. He might know finance really well. I don't know. But I know most of the financial advisors that I've known, they know nothing about finance. Though They know sales really well. So, whatever they tell you is going to, is going to sound so rehearsed. That, you know, like if you even change one number, they would not be able to adjust to it. You know what I mean? No, I felt that. So, um, yeah. Yeah, so like with this stuff. So, I mean, in order to, but I mean, I mean the, the paradoxical thing about it is the reason that most salespeople do this and not finance people is because you can know everything. You can know how to make a billion dollars if you can't explain it to people. It doesn't matter what you know, you know, because you're not going to bring that. You're not going to be able to transfer that knowledge to someone else in a way that they can use it. You know what I mean? So, like, for example, I had this teacher, this economics teacher in business school. This was the smartest dude in the world, but we all hated him because he could not teach. He talked to us like we were retarded. You know, he's like, how come you guys don't understand this? It's like, because you're not teaching it to us, right? You know, so I mean, like he knew it all, but he couldn't explain it to us. So I mean, like what you were saying with language, what I think salespeople are good at is waking up a desire inside of other people to buy or to, I guess, engage in whatever they have to offer. You know. So as a, as a life coach, you can be the smartest psychologist, you can know everything about how, or NLP or whatever, I don't, do you guys study that stuff, NLP? I don't know, a lot of life coaches are into that. But you can know everything about how to make someone's life better, but if you can't um, explain to that person that you can do that, and then them give you an opportunity to show what you can do, then it doesn't matter. What does the fact that you know how to do that matter? You know. So with the language thing that you're talking about, I think um, more than language is just you know making waking that thing up inside of somebody that says, um, or more is more understanding them and making them understand what you can offer. You know what I mean? Or do my sounding like retarded? Uh, to me, like you. Make it more sense in the conversation. Me and you probably got for an hour, but I think he's coming from a from a different angle. I get what he, to me what he's saying make a lot of sense. I mean, you might have talked around that for a long time. Hmm. I like what you said um, about the idea of just like waking up a desire in somebody. Like when it comes to something like that, it may be sales, but the, the but even that like that's a, to me that's a general concept. Like waking up a desire in somebody. I think is what we do when we meet a woman. We want to wake up that desire in her about what we may have to offer. Um, mm -hmm. This is what we do as parents. We want to make make sure our kids are ready for the world. So we try to wake up 
that desire in us, I guess, to either raise or rear or, or, or to mentor or whatever. Like, but it's even that. Like, like right now, I don't feel like for what's going on in my mind, I don't feel like I have the right language to explain it. Um, not in the sense that like I feel like I know more, but I think uh, the fact that I don't know a lot, but I get what people are saying. Um, there's there's a, a, a a language that they're using, or that lets me believe that it's a language you can use for other things. I think, like, all right, if I went and sat down and I talked to you, I think, and see, this would make you right. Um, it come to environment, so on and so forth. I think where, where me and you come from, and then just a little bit that we know about each other, you can say, like, all right, I'm going to talk to Marcus just like this. Now, I think you're going to say the same thing that you always wanted to say, but I'm going to talk to Marcus just like this, because I know he'll get it this way if I put it to him that way. And I and and this is why, like, me and her conversations go a certain way. She's one of the only few people that talk to me with, like, I think what she's talking about, like, make a lot of sense. And, like, even if it's the complete opposite of what I'm talking about, it makes sense to be like, damn. The way she put it to me made me just, like, stop me in my tracks. I might feel like... Oh, but you give me such a hard time, you would never know that. I always tell her she's right. I, I tell her when she's right. Well, I tell her we just going to agree to disagree. But, like, it's just... She, she talking language that I understand, which, well, for me, that's rationale. Like, you, two plus two got to equal four, whether you're telling me you can walk on the moon or you're telling me you can walk on water. If you were to tell me that, like, all right, that's a result of X, Y, Z, so on and so forth, I might not ask you anything else. Like, to me, it's like, all right, you turn that light switch on. I think I told you this before. You turn that light switch on. I don't know why that light come on. But I trust the fact that every time I hit that switch, if it come on enough, I'm not going to ask you what happened, what, what electrons and what wires was connected. I'm not, gonna, I'm not even going to ask you all that. I understand the language, so when I hit that flip, that switch, the light come on. If it come on enough, I'm not going to ask you why. That's the language I understand. Like, is that, if something is tangible, if something is rational, I get it. But I think most people are like that. But like your instructor in economics class, I think he sounded like the type of person that might want to explain to me exactly what wire is connecting to that wire, and that he might be brilliant and he might get it. But like he's talking in a language that only he understands. But I think it's a way. When I was taking I'm economics class, I get two plus two equal four. So if you can make everything that you're saying to be derived off that general concept, everything is fine. Like I did really really good in math because math was something that like. There's a right answer and there's a wrong answer. If you if you show me the formula, I can figure it out on my own. I don't even need you to explain it to me. You show me the formula, and if I can just like rely on the fact that two plus two equal four, I'll figure it out on my own. I think I think a lot of us are like that though, but we miss like that common principle. Like two plus two is a common principle. At the end of the day, if you don't even get math, you can just look at your finger and say. You can't take that away from anybody. Um, but I think the things that we do, like in general, like in life, they got like those same type of concepts, but we haven't dumbed it down to like one, two, one, two, okay. You can't do it, you know. Unfortunately, some stuff in life you cannot dump. I mean, some stuff you just have to look at. I mean, for like what? Uh, like, all right, going from, from math to like statistics. Have you ever took statistics? Nope. Yeah, so like statistics, when you first look at it, I mean, it's like, what in the world is going on there? You know? Especially if you're not a math person, period, anyway. Right, that's really, yeah, if you're not a math person. But then you have to sit down and look at that. You know, like I read, I was reading this book, I don't know if it was by um, Malcolm Gladwell or some other dude. He was like talking about these adults who went back to take an algebra class or something. It was like, so the average 14-year-old, that's the person who usually takes this, would like sit down for like 10 minutes, 10, 15 minutes, and be like, I don't know how to do it, I'm out of here. But an adult who's going back to take it, they're going to sit down a little bit longer. Now, is the stuff more complicated? I mean, well, is the, is the older person smarter? Or is the older person's brain work differently? No, not really. It's just now this the older person is sitting down there for a reason. An older person is not going to sit down and look at some algebra for fun, you know? So, like, like I was saying, so, like, stuff is really complicated. Like, like, life in general is extremely complicated. I don't think you can apply the same principles in math and life, but, I mean, uh, 
I think a lot of things in life are really complicated. You have to sit and look and think about it. You know, you can't just say, I mean, it's, you can't, I mean, it's not like a, I mean, you have to go through a progression of things. Like, say that you want, instead of, you know, the regular math, you're taking, you're trying to figure out calculus. Or you are actually trying to figure out, you know, how to, how does light switch, light stuff work. So in order to figure that stuff out, you have to know physics and derivatives and all that. So but before you figure out, like, calculus, you have to know, um, like, some ultra-advanced multiplication. Before you know multiplication, you have to know really good addition. And so maybe you can dumb it down like that by going through the steps. Like, maybe you can say step one, two, three, four, five, and six... But, I mean, like, some stuff you can never, like, dumb it down. Like, if you actually were trying to figure out the what's going on when you put when you flip that light, you're going to have to sit down for a little bit to figure that out. You know, that's, I mean, some stuff is just not simple. Hmm. Wonderful. I wonder... I don't know. I, I think... They say like with like Henry Ford man like the Model T that like that engine was similar to like what a lawnmower like might look like today, compared to like what we see today in like automobiles. Um, he said that's why like you had so many people like when we were growing up we probably all got an uncle that knew how to work on cars or somebody down the street like that's why it was so simple because like the earlier cars were like that, um, but that 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 if, if that was the two plus two equals four. Um, to get to where we are today, it still was all based off that. So, like, I agree with what you say, but if somebody wanted to take a class to learn how to work on a Mercedes-Benz engine, you wouldn't start them on a Mercedes-Benz engine. So if I wanted to take calculus, I'm going to start a calculus. Right. I started Algebra 1. Yeah. Basic math. Um, but, all right, if I'm taking what you said, life is calculus. Life is. Like, is it, you're not going to go in there and just be like, I got my time saving right here. I'm going to be able to figure everything out. I agree. Um, but I think I think we all kind of play from if we using that example we all kind of play from like we all learn the same multiplication table to start out with now some of us may like when I was in high school I took Algebra 1 I took Geometry Honors and then I took Chemistry Honors by my senior year in high school I didn't have to take math no more so I didn't take math no more but the next progression would have been uh, I think it was like uh, trig honors or like pre-calc um, when I went to college I went to college for theater math wasn't a requirement there either so I went from being like an honor student in math to not taking it no more so I'm pretty good in math but I never even got I don't know what statistics would have looked like to me it's, it doesn't scare me but I don't know what it would have looked like to me um, but I feel like that because in algebra one I got like the basic concepts now I think life is hard but Again, I think it get hard, like you said, when you start progressing. But like that don't go from away from a factor like, all right, if you don't if you don't have water, you're gonna die. If you don't have food, you're gonna die. If it's hot outside, and you, or if it's cold outside, and you don't find a way to get shelter, you're gonna die. To me, that would be like pre-algebra. And once you get to calculus, is okay. I have two children. I got a mortgage. Um, I'm gonna have to work two jobs to kind of make this work. That's when, to me, you start getting into calculus. But, like, all of that still come back to, like, if these kids don't have food, they're going to die. If I don't have no money to pay the rent, we're not going to have a place to live. I'm going to be homeless. Then we're probably going to die. I have to be so morbid as far as, like, we're going to die all the time. You're using that die too much (laughs) around me, Mike. Um, And, again, like, well, me and her usually end up with this conversation that they're like, Marcus, you're like this. Is more, you're like this. Just flower child that believes everything could just be like. Well, I'm, what do you call me? The world save or something like that? Or people save or something like that? You remind me of the old me. And the me I have to check every single morning. Go sit down, no, no. You got another nickname that nobody know about? Yeah. I just think it's um something to think about, like especially like listening to you come in. Um, Every week, just like seeing your progression is, I will argue, I don't know the extent of everything in your life, I will argue that like as people progress, it's not because they take on more, it's because they kind of go back to the basics. And you know a lot of people that make improvements say that. Like, all right, 
when I need a change, I'm just going to go back to the basics. I'm not even going to try to overcomplicate things. I'm just going to go back to the basics. But that gave me to my, my idea that, like, okay, it got to be, if that's the case, and if that's what we all kind of program to think, it got to just be like a general language. Like, I feel like we're just missing it. I don't think it, like... It seems like it's one of those things where you in your mind are overcomplicating it. Possibly. It's Possibly. Like if people speak different languages, learn the language they speak if you want to speak it. For me, for example, I want to be fluent in Spanish. I just do. That's just a desire I have. I have to study their language and become fluent in it. Do I want to speak Arabic? Probably not. So I'm not going to study their language. You want to you want to speak these people language and whatever it is, you speak it. If you don't, fly by it. Every crowd is not going to be for you. You have to learn to be okay with that and move on. Because think of how much further you can go when you're focused on what's for you instead of trying to focus on, well, this might not be for me, but I'm going to make it be for me. Ooh. But you got this group over here that's just like, hey, Marcus, I'm waiting on you. I went to Korea when I was in the Army and like, I didn't speak their language, they didn't speak mine. But when you went and went shopping, <laughs> we all got that. Mm -hmm. We went, you know, uh, we went somewhere, something to eat, pointed something on the menu. We all got that. What no, like, what no age, what no cultural barrier, nothing like that. Um, I just think. Uh, <laughs> even, I use it, that is, to me, that. When I listen to you and I'd be like, yeah, you're right. And then it'd be like this one little thing that'd be like, it turned that light back on for me. And then I start going again. Like, yeah. yeah. Money do talk. But I think like that's an example of like that being a common language. You can't get around it. And ain't nothing, it ain't nothing to do with like, all right, that group's for you. Leave them alone. Right. That group is for you. Yeah. Was, that, that, everybody speak. Everybody speak dollars. Right. But you still have to, like when I say it, if someone come to me for coaching and I'm just not that particular person for them, you have to understand that all money ain't good money, you know. And if you're in the field that we're in, and even in the field you're going into, uh, where you're in, um, you have to know what's for you and what's not for you and be okay with that. Because if you, like you said, you get sued for stepping outside of your boundary, then that creates more problem for you than it does help. And so, although that money talked, it's a good money. You go into a restaurant, you get food poisoning, and they knew something was wrong, but they served you the food anyway, they're dealing with a lawsuit. And possibly being on the news, and you know, depending on how bad it is, you know. You get a whole bunch of people sick off of this rice that you knew was old or whatever, and then it's a problem. So you still have to be mindful because all money and good money. So although that's a common language, you still, in every area of life, you have to be mindful because you want to... You don't want stuff to come back and bite you. Mm. Yes. So we were, all right, let's say, let's say you guys were my best friends. You are my best friends. Right, let's say you guys are my best friends. Um, and I'm going to use your example. And it's just like, it's not even like me proving my point thing. It's just like, I'm curious what your advice would be or like what you would say the answer would be. Go back to that example you said about the, the farmer. He used to doing things sun up to sundown, 18 hours a day working. And that works for him to a point where like when you walk up to him and you say, I got this machine that could do things in like six hours. And he rejects it. Um, if that was me that was offering him this thing for like six hours, and I came back and said, Pierre, man, I don't know what to do. It's this guy's he's working for 18 hours a day. I can show him how to do it in six. This can help him, but he's just not getting it. Would you advise me to just say, okay, find something, talk his 18-hour language? Or would you say, continue to try to make him understand that you can do this in six? What would your advice be? Um, maybe show them. I mean, like if you can give a, I mean, the best way to tell somebody something is to show them an illustration, you know. So, and again, that's, I mean, it depends on like, so you, I mean, like if you're committed to helping this dude, it's like, I mean, some, I, what I deal with a lot is like, I have, like, I have a lot of family members who, I mean, like, they're just, We'll just say they're on the wrong path. And no matter how much I talk to them and tell them you need to get your thing, you need to do your thing, you need to start doing things better, right? They're not going to listen to me. So maybe that farmer is one of those just hard-headed people that's like, you know, 
I'm going to work. I don't care what your machine can do. You know? But, if you can... So, but going back, I think your your point is more to language, not the tangent that I went on. But no, I think that's what... Really, that's what happens. Like, if if I'm talking like that, that, that that's what happens. So I think that's more realistic to deal with it from that aspect as opposed to, like, all right, let's strictly, strictly make it about language. I, I kind of like the question, like, should I... If, if I was asking you that question, because you kind of went into like what he may be thinking, is it more beneficial there to kind of, like you say, figure out if I want to talk to Spanish people, figure out Spanish, or should I continue to say that, like, okay, it's a general language? Well, what would you say? Like, what would your advice be? <laughs> I feel like I'm going to repeat myself. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's a, to me, it's just, you got to know what you want out of something, so. If you want to deal with a certain group, like I had to, um, and I feel like I'm constantly going through a rebranding thing this year, but even now, just going through like a little bit um, more of rebranding um, for myself and expanding even what I'm doing with youth and young adults, but um, kind of tying in something different, like dealing with a different community. And so that's the way I describe it. Even with taking language and stuff like that is more so dealing with the communities. You got communities. So whether you're going in this area, that area, it's a particular community. So you got to look at what type of community you're in and kind of go with that. So for me, it's easier for me to go into the community that I'm going to because I've lived a life. So now trying to brand myself whereas I am an advocate for um, people with disabilities and for children and young adults with disabilities and um, workshops for parents. Like, why didn't I do that a long time ago? You know what I mean? Like, that light bulb just has to click in me. Like, duh, you have a difference about you that you can go and dominate that community. So it's more so finding, again, my thing is that niche, that language, that community that fits you, that you won't sacrifice yourself for or vice versa in a sense I'm trying to say something totally different from what I've said because you, you keep yeah stop coming to me well, there's only three people here like me and him can't have a conversation about <laughs> <laughs> alright well um this meetup is about like a positive place for like minded individuals um and I think at the root whether for what we do or rather for what you do like it uh this conversation could boil down to like, to me, the simple language of what we're talking about is like imposing wills. Um, and maybe that's why I fight. They're like, I think the conversation that we, we may be figuring out, like, all right, let me just focus on my niche. Um, I think the opposition, if there is such a thing for what it is that we may fight for, or what we may believe in, they're not doing that. They're not saying, they're like, okay, if I'm about negative living, um, I'm just going to take my negative living just to negative people. They would have no problem, like, taking the conversation that we have or the lives that we would like to lead and imposing their will, even though we don't got nothing to do with them. So some of it do be like, okay, Marcus, you think you get this, 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 It do be like, because I feel like they're but not the taking their will come home. to you if you have a niche. And what I mean by that is... Um, Everybody knows that my thing is youth and young adults. Like, I go and I can make a youth be like, wow, she could drive a regular car. Like, I've had that before. And I'm like, yeah, so that means you could do it too, you know, and stuff like that. But then you get their professional people, their teachers and stuff that go to all these different churches, all these part of these different organizations, be like, okay, yeah, you talk to her, but I know some adults that need to hear that. You know, so although that's my niche, I've probably spoken at more adult to more youth, like because I'll go to youth conferences and speak to over 200 youth or whatever. But then from there, I'll get invited to come speak at this church or to come speak for this organization or that organization. And I go and I'm speaking to adults, not youth, if that makes sense to you. So you can have an impact on the world. But if you have your thing, like if nobody else want me, I want this group to want me. Like I want. So it it gives me life 
when I go speak to kids. Like, a school called me today, and they like, how much you're charging? I was so excited that I was like, oh, whatever y'all want to give me, give me a love offer. You know, I was just like, Nina, did you say that? Like, you have a, if you tell your PA that or something, you're in trouble. But just because I'm like, fourth grade kids, don't tell me it's fourth grade kids, because that's like my top, you know, group for when I had the most difficulties in school. Mm-hmm. So it's like, oh, I got them, I come, you know, whatever. And so, but you never know what doors that are open. I speak there, and it's at a Christian school. You got other teachers there, you got the principal there. And oftentimes, okay, refer me to other schools, refer me to, you know, whatever, whatever. Well, you can come speak at my church. And so I've been noticing, like, stuff like that happened. For example, at my event, the, we had a, I had an event called Introducing Boys to Men. And some people that was there, I didn't know a few people there. And now they're contacting me like, wow, you know, can't come speak at my church. Can't come, you know, do this and do that. And I'm like, wow, they didn't even see me speak really. I was just up and out the way. But just doing what you're supposed to do for yourself will open up doors for you to do so many other things. And make that impact on the world that Marcus Carter, the gold mentor, will make. You can put a dent on the world. You gotta put a dent on it sounds like you just said, um, maybe don't focus so much as the message, just the effort, like putting that energy in one place and then just letting that blossom as opposed to saying, let me fix exactly what I'm about to say so reach more people. Focus on who you can reach and just let that take on a life of its own. Because you're a mess, you have a, a niche, whether you know it or not. Like, just watching you um, from your event and listening to you and things like that, um, you work great with adults. I mean, awesome. And it's so many adults, like I told you. I know so many more adults that needed to be in that room that is afraid to move from being, you know, totally dependent to, from independent to interdependent, like you were saying. And it's just like those people need to, and the way you put it out there, yeah, I mean, you literally did dumb it down to where they can be like, oh, yeah, like he's right. So you you have your niche, whether you know it or not, you know. So you reach those people, and then you have all these other organizations that deal with all these people that don't have that. These nonprofits who look for people to come and do workshops with their clients and um, with different groups that they work, or even trainings and stuff like that with their employees to get them to understand. If you're trying to move up in the company, you're starting here, you know, work together or whatever. But you you have that. I just don't know if you know you have that because you are, you are changing the world. You are. You are changing the world. But be okay with having your message because your message, your signature has an impact. And it can impact so many more people if you just be like, okay, this is what I do. And you say it a lot, but I don't even think you know you say it a lot. Mm-hmm. I'll take that. Um, I'm going to close with a quote. Um, and I think like the quote kind of sums up like the conversation we're having. I think it sums up every point I made, every point you made, and every point you made. Um, the world desperately needs more geniuses, not more intelligent spectators or idle critics muttering in obscurity. Human problems are more complex and dangerous than ever, and we are regularly reminded how fragile the equilibriums of social, political, economic, and religious forces truly are. Humanity doesn't magically survive by the grace of the unknown. It's born on the backs of mighty individuals that are often misunderstood, fought, ridiculed, thwarted, and forgotten by most. Um, I think just us having a conversation Like, it's subtle victories that I take. I think, like, I don't know how y'all feel like, but when I walk out of these, like, last time it was just me and him here. And it was, like, two weeks before the event. And me and him, I think I said, and me and him, pretty, he pretty much helped me handcraft what happened in there by a basic conversation that me and him had. Um, and I think, like, subtle things like this push the pendulum forward more than we give it credit. Um, and if I picked up anything from you, like, if you finding your niche, uh, like, this more or less would be my niche. Like, I don't know kind of like how your niche is, but this would more or less would be my language, too. I feel like it's more impactful to, like, 
I feel better listening to what y'all are saying in this type of environment than I would have felt like asking this question to that group because I think people in the group they they too easily affected. Um, but I think like the the situation in this quote is real and it goes to what you were saying. Stuff is too complex. Life is kind of like calculus, and it can't always be the two plus two that I'm talking about. It's calculus for all intents and purposes. Um, but I think it's having the belief in what it is we're talking about, like how with you, right? You, you find in this, like, okay, fourth graders, to be honest with you, when I was going through it, that was the age. Um, but being able to identify that, I think that allows you to kind of impose your will, and we can call it language, we cannot call it language, um, to know how it feels to be misunderstood, fought, ridiculed, thwarted, and forgotten by most. Um, I like to say in my life, like what I'm doing right now, I'm not different. I don't feel different than any time I've ever been in my life. I like to say I just use my powers for good now. Like I used to use the same energy to see if I can get some ass. It's the same energy to see like, okay, how many bottles can I pop in the club? Like how can that happen? You know, I used to use the same energy to make sure that happened. But now I'm just, just kind of being focused on what different. But it's the same markets. I approach things to like the same way. And I think we kind of, I think we're accomplishing that on like a greater scale than we might give ourselves credit for. Not right now. I think we affected, like, I listen more to y'all know to, like, the things we talk about. These are the types of things that get replayed, as opposed to the fact, like, I'm reading a book that you told me about two months ago right now, that Stephen Covey said. Oh, yeah. I'm reading that now. Like, you probably forgot all about that, but, like, I walked out of here with that room, like, I'm getting that book. I'm getting that book. What's the book? Uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. It's amazing. Where you at now? Where? I'm only on, like, Habit 2, but I'm like, okay. the overview blew me away before we even right. got into That's, the Habits. Yeah. It like blew me, but he talks a language that I understand. I think it's simple. Yeah. He he do it. Like I think he get it. Like, in, every time I I get off it, like I get I see something like that, or I have a conversation like me and you had, or like even the conversations we have now. I think it's amazing how like you always end up in a room with people like me and her, and I always take a lot from what you say because you just look at it from a normal perspective. Like you talk a language that anybody can understand. And I always take that's why I always feel like I take a lot from what it is you say. But it, may, it also what makes me think that like what I'm talking about is possible. Yeah, it's good that you it's good that you gotta take time with that. I mean, like you can't just. I remember thinking, all right, this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna sit down, read it straight through. You there's no way you can go straight through that book, man. Well, I mean, I guess you can if you want to. But no, I have like read. that's a book that you have to like sit and read like a chapter, uh, maybe even just ten pages for like a day and just let that soak in. I mean, like, like I told you the way I do. I got like Audible, and I just listen to it. Like when I'm on my on the train, you know. He got the way his chapter as a speaker. The way his chapters I set up, like he got a chapter. Like the first chapter is about proactivity, but like that's broken down into probably like six or seven little sub chapters. Each one could be like their own seminar. It'd be like the the nuggets that he got like inside of it, the way he put it to you, with the examples already in there. Really I've heard. I, that's all swift but like, what? What notebook is that written down in? I think um, on my last mastermind call, they was talking about that, and I think she broke them down. You know, because my iPhone, I missed the call. I had to, you know, go listen to the recording. So would you like if you can't do like if I wanted to say come to you and do how you do something like this? You can do it. I could. Like offer these types of service or like present them? Or offer oh, I can just show it to you. I wouldn't, like I wouldn't be able to like say, all right, I'm going to do this and this is how much I'm going to charge you for it. No, but maybe. Yet. Right, yeah, you're right, yeah. Right. Actually, he's probably not going to charge you either, but since, since he's going through Edward Jones, he's probably going to try to get you to, well, I mean, like, I don't know if he's a salesman, but like what his job would be was to, is to get you to purchase an investment item from Edward Jones. And the way he gets paid is like when you buy that, he'll get a percentage of what you put into that. Over the life of the residual income on the Yeah. Cool. Nice racket. Really nice racket. I mean, actually, I mean, it's really good for you. I mean, like, I mean, to be told, even though he might be a salesman, he might be. That's one thing that, I mean, I don't mind selling, you know, because. When you sell like investment stuff, I mean you, that's only good. I mean that that really helps people. You know, it's, it's not like you're selling them a used car or a toaster or something. 
Yeah. I think like if, as a salesperson, I, I am a salesperson, so profit ain't a dirty word to me. Uh, but it all comes down to like is the situation gonna be a win-win? Yeah. You know? Yeah. I would think something like that is a win-win, but like I think we live in a society where like it become calculus to me. Like I'm not sure. Are you sure? Because the, the conversation me and him having is like, would I be comfortable? Like if I did an event like that, would I be comfortable letting him talk to people that I bring there? And that's why I'm like, all right. Because for me, like I'm the type of person I'll just say like I'll see what's to it. But I don't trust him like being ever talking to people I know because like the, the the small niche that I got or the small group of people, I'm careful with them. I'm careful that when you know when I deal with people that they don't feel like ain't nobody about to come to you and sell nothing, ain't nobody about to come to you and do this. We just gonna have tabernacles, we gonna have our church, and then we gonna get up and we go. Yeah, if he comes, he's definitely.